Hey Bruno, good boy. Good boy Bruno. What's that mate, eh? What's that, eh? That's your favourite, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's actually for Pace, that one. This is for you, Bruno. Yeah. Get away for a minute, mate. Good boy. Smell good? No, I didn't say you get it. Does it smell good? Smell good? You like that, don't you? Mmm. Tossy, um. That's for you. And this is for Pace. We might put Pace in the back of the truck, because right now, there's a bitch on heat somewhere, and when there's bitches on heat, dogs can fight. Look at that nice knife. That's from Simon Smith. Beautiful knife. I use it all the time. It's got a lock blade. Keeps its edge well. Anyway, Bruno, I'll give that to you in a minute, mate. Okay. I'm actually filming with the Galaxy S20. This is the S21. The new one. The old one's better, because you can pause, and record, and pause. Does that look good, mate? Posse, I've got some plastic on there. We don't want to eat that. There we go. You get in your box. Get in your box. That's your box in there, mate. Get in there. Get in your box. Okay. Put that in. That'll work, eh? I want to show you guys a dog bowl that doesn't spill in the back of the truck. Bee bowls. Uh, the bloke that made those, you know how you are, mate. Comment below with a link where people can get them. Because that is a brilliant bowl. It can hold about five litres of water, or I'm guessing, and it never spills. I just fill it up in the back of the trunk like this. I stick it there, it sits perfectly in there, like that. I'll put my tap on up here. Look at that, straight into the bowl. Close it up again. How cool is that? What do you reckon of my idea of having a 10 litre tank built into the truck? I reckon I should get that idea painted. Painted did? Is that a word? I should get a patent on it. Right, Bruno, we haven't forgot about you, mate, but right now we're just going to walk the rest of everybody else because they uh, have been very patient waiting. So what I do is I always feed my dogs when I put them somewhere, and that way you end up with obedient dogs. So in the case of putting pace in the back of the truck while I'm walking these guys, just by doing that, he knows if he goes in the truck, he'll get his posse up. So never underestimate the power of bribery. With small children, dogs, and even a few adults. Good morning, Poe. How are you going, Poe? I'll poke that up there for now. There's the old daisy chain, easy to undo, and oh, almost. There we go. How are you going? Good kill. Oh, it's a good kill. Oh, Bruno's excited. Come on, Poe. Jump out of there. I know it's wet. You don't want to come down. And we've got Bigsy. Bigsy and B both hate the, the mud. They look down at that there. It's like, no, I don't want to come out. You watch, you'll sit there. You can smell Poe's dog roll. That's actually Bruno's dog roll. B has slipped quite a bit. I lent him to a couple of young guys a while ago. And since then, he just hasn't been listening. That is one of the piles that young Daniel has cut out. He's done quite a bit. He's worked pretty well. And Arb will fill those with concrete. Let me just stand back and show you where his mezzanine, 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 that's the word I'm looking for, mezzanine. Floor's going to go. It's a building that's going to be 4 metres by 2.8, I think it is, or 2.7. The veranda comes out to here. He's got an upstairs and a downstairs, and that's his place. I'm providing that for him. All he's got to do is give me two hours a day, and he gets everything provided for it, including that. We're buying that for him with Patreon money. So, Patreons, thank you very much. I can see that Bigsy's now tried to get back to get that bit of dog roll on there. He's trying to work it out. Bigsy! Don't touch it. Bigsy, come. No, you can smell the dog roll. Bigsy, come. Good boy. Good dog. Good boy. That caravan there is currently where Daniel is staying. I got him a job. A job working in the forestry. He's working today. And one of the working crew said to him, Oh, I bet you Clay just got you that job so you can get a permit to hunt in the forestry. You know, I never thought about it. But now that he's mentioned it, yeah. Hell yeah. So that means that we can maybe hunt through the summer in places where we couldn't have. Because normally that's our problem. I didn't think about that. All I did was I asked Redneck Joe, mate of mine, you know, where there's a job going? Because Redneck Joe's got a, uh, a boss called James who's got his own forestry company. And James is a good boss and a good bastard. And I thought, well, that'd be a good guy for Daniel to work with. But James obviously didn't need anybody. But he put word out and that's what's happening. So he's got a job. So he's 
He's staying at the farmhouse, working, making some money, and already in the bush. He's a bushman, and that's exactly what he wanted to do. He's come from Auckland, and now he's down here in the South Island, out there in the scrub working, which is great, isn't it? Young guy, 20 years of age, I think he is. And uh, I think he's going to go well, too. He's a nice kid. Heal up. Heal up, B. Looks like he's uh, a little bit underweight, and he's limping. You hurt your foot, mate. It's okay, mate. It's all right. You okay? I wonder if Daniel's, because Daniel's uh, got the duty of feeding him. What if he's not been giving him enough posse yum? I'm feeding him most of the time. Sit down, Bigsy. I'm not sure what's going on here. Bigsy, sit down. Yeah, he's just a little bit, looks a little bit like he could have a bit more condition on him. Bigsy, come back in here. He's trying to get his dog roll. Bigsy, come. Good boy. Good dog. Yeah, winter time, they need more feed. Local contractor, Tristan Graham, who did all that for me, has now sold it for me. Which means we can now afford to put a fence here, eh, Po? That's right, we're going to put a fence here, that's right, mate, yeah. And it's going to be good because we're going to have it going right around the outside here, it's about a kilometre right around. And we are probably going to do netting, get Jamie from Fence Works to do that for us. I've also talked to Ezra at Easy Fencing, but I think that's what we're going to do. Hey Bruno, and that means that Bruno can roam around this paddock without me worrying about him going on the road. B going 100 mile out. Right down the bottom. He's a fast dog. Bigsy come! Heel up Bigsy! Good boy! Bigsy come! 100 mile air. Mount Arthur this morning looking absolutely spectacular. Wow. Bruno's got a new blanket, and since he's had it, he's, uh, he's better. This joint's uh, better. I don't know how it's working exactly, but it does. He just seems to be better. This was an absolute bargain. I bought this for 1550 bucks. I bought it so my daughter's girlfriend's got a place to stay when they came here. There's a price on it there. It's got a bit of rust in it. But uh, I actually gave the guy an extra hundred bucks for it. I said, here mate, have a bit more, because it's too good a value, and he delivered it for me. These guys are love on the rain, like ducks do. You can tell the tame ones, they come up, they can see this. They know what it is. Yeah, you like a bit of that too, wouldn't you, eh, mate? That's actually for your mother. It's a Poe. In your box, Poe. In your box. Poe, in your box. Good girl. I tell her to get in a box because she eats her hair, it falls through the gaps, and she misses out on it. Right, you, yeah, mate. If you have a dog that scoffs, then chop it into small pieces. This guy's generally okay. I'm going to give you twice as much this morning, mate, because you're looking a little bit thin. There we go. See the top of his uh, back showing. It's part of the breed too, but he just needs a bit more condition. Oh, you run away, you did it. In your box. Good boy. Yep. Get ice to slow there, Bigsy. Don't eat too fast, mate. Right, Bruno. Is that good, eh? Enjoy that? Good boy. I might have to start chopping his up, because he's just a wee bit faster. No, that's not for you. That's for Bruno. You're being very patient there, Bruno. Yes, you are. And you're dribbling. Yes, I know you're hungry. Come on, let's eat it. Come on. Ready, come. Come on, boy. His blanket got wet last night, didn't it, mate? He's got this little sunny corner here on the porch, which is where I put his blanket down. Got a bit wet last night. That's his blanket there. Actually, it's not too wet. It's actually all right. Just put it over here to dry it a bit more in the sun. And he's got this nice big beard as well. That's your beard in the sun. And his blanket goes on top of that. You've got to... Yeah, are you okay, mate? Right, we haven't forgotten about you. Yeah, I've got your food here. That's right. That's his blanket there. There you go, mate. Good boy. And I've tied him up because he's wandering a bit these days. Eat up. He eats just little bits. He never ever chokes on his dog roll. He just takes little bits off, even though he's got a big jaw. Goes pretty quick. You enjoy that boy, eh? Good tucker. Good dog. Good boy. At this stage, I take his food off him. Leave it. Leave it. I take it off him. That's aggression controlled. Also, to teach him who the boss is. 
Your dog should never be aggressive when you take their food off them and then eat up and give it back to them again. That's a good boy. Just so he knows you're the boss, particularly these larger breeds like this. Good boy. Three, four befores. 3.6 metres long. Paces in the back so he'll start squealing any minute. The thing about a truck like this is you can put timber on top. It's good, isn't it? So this morning I've got to get Owie's fence straight and there's a digger next door to here so hopefully the digger can drive those straight in the ground so we have to fart around with concrete and stuff so we're going to head down to there. See you down there. Going through the car wash. Oh, the bag's got blown down on the driveway. Had a tree come down the other day. Young fella Austin staying with me tidy that up. Thank you Austin. Good bastard. There's my free range chickens up in there in that little paddock. Living the life. I just had to stop down here because it's so beautiful. Show you guys. Got the sea. This Mapur over there, there's the mountains in the background. Look at the snow. I'll zoom up there a bit. That's some of my hunting ground up there. The storm has been and gone. And it's actually beautiful this morning. I think I'll let Pace go out the back of the truck for a bit of a run. Uh, uh, stay here. We've got a highway here, mate. I'll take him to hold my hand underneath his leg like that when I carry him and hold him up. Because there's cars right there. And he's a uh, dog that doesn't actually know about cars. There we go. This way, mate. Come with me. Pace come. Pace come. This is my fishing ground here where I go out in the kayak. Of course he wants to go along there with the waters. He can smell the dogs that have been there, don't you mate? Look at the snow and the mountains in the background here. There's just snow everywhere, she's cold. What you doing Pace? Come on, go for a walk. You can see an oyster on that rock there, Pacific oyster, but it's been picked out by the oyster catchers, they've eaten it. And that's a green lip mussel, nice eating. Didn't take long for pace, didn't take long for pace at all to run away. You watch out for those rocks mate, they can be hard on your pads. Good dog, good boy. One whistle, he's straight back, he is an obedient little dog. Good boy, good dog, good man. That's a good dog. He listens very well. It's just so nice to feel the sun on my back. It's awesome. It's been like shitty the last few days. We've had floods. My daughter, Data, was supposed to come stay with me and uh, she couldn't get through on the coast because the river was over the road. So this is great. It feels nice just to have that sun on your skin. It makes my mood elevated. Weather really affects how I feel. I think it affects how everybody feels, but when it's just rainy and wet all the time, that's why I just couldn't really live on the west coast of New Zealand. I think if I lived over there, I might get a bit sort of, I don't know, sick of it. You guys that live over there, well, hats off to you for sustaining what's a miserable environment a lot of the time. But uh, grey, grey Mouth is a lovely place, but geez, it's grey there. It's a good name for it because it is a grey mouth. I've heard it called other things too. I've heard it called Grey Hole. Uh, right now in Westport it's flooded a lot, mind you that's flooded in lots of places in the country right now but I just couldn't be without the sun, it really lifts your spirits up and today, these clear winter days in Mapua, they're the best days on the planet, they're absolutely pristine, it's cold but the sun is shining, you can feel it on you and it just lifts your spirit up. Right we'll get this dog back in the truck hopefully without him running on the road, Pace get in, get in, good boy, get him behind. Heal up, good boy. You can see the fence is not too flash. On the other side I've put some tight ends to stop it falling over. Over here. I've got three wire towers going across with straps. And I've taken this morning these uh, four by fours. And stuck on there so hopefully the guys can drive into the ground with a the digger they've got plenty of depth to go down 
She's a, I'm guessing a 1.8 fence, so there'll be plenty of timber on that. They can just drive them with the digger. 20 ton digger will snot them in the ground, piece of piss if the digger driver knows what he's doing. Morning Nala, how you going, hey? Good girl. I always save some of the uh, pig skins from pigs I've given her for dog shoes. And a few bones too. Hey? Pippi's having a walk right now. Ah, we walks one dog at a time. You've had your walk this morning already, haven't you, eh? Good girl. You're a good dog. Yes, you are. Those are some of the chickens I gave Awi. There's another one. And there's another one there. And the one over there. There's my little pride and joy. Took young Daniel and Jody out there the other day. We fished off the back. We did a live stream. We caught about 12 kahawai. That's my mate Tim's boat. And that's my mate Mike's boat. That's a real old one. Currently a light breeze blowing and quite a few shags out there feeding on small fish, which means that kahua will be coming up in here. So I might put a line out later if I get time. A while ago, the bilge pump stopped working in my boat and I was a bit dumb. I started the motor without all the water being out and the bottom fan belt picked up the water and flicked it over everything, including the starter motor. Bucket the starter motor, 500 bucks later. So I took the starter motor into Burnett's and they replaced it with a brand new one. The trouble is the new one, which was identical to one out of mine, which came out of a Ford, didn't fit. And the reason it didn't fit is because the old one that came out of Ford had been drilled out on the flange to make it fit. And uh, I took it back out to the boat, it didn't fit. And I'll take it back to Burnett's and drilled it and hopefully now it fits. Here's the old girl. Well that's our new starter motor. One paddle. I've had this boat for about two years. We've had a lot of fun on it actually, but we haven't taken it very far. We've been out the front a few times. She's got nice lines. She's an old Kauri hull. She's built quite well. And for four and a half thousand dollars, it was a steal, mind you. You spend money on old boats, there's no doubt about it. But we've had a lot of fun on it. The boys have caught plenty of fish off it. And she's not a baddie. Got a nice cabin inside. So, we'll see if we can get this uh, into the boat without dropping over the side. That's the engine. Nuffield. Goes well too. But we need to get our starter motor in. So, there's the housing. And hopefully, this time she fits. Because I've had it out here once and it didn't. We've got a new hole in it now, but we'll see how we go. Well, this is dodgy as fuck. Check it out. The flange doesn't line up with those holes. You can't make it. It's impossible. It doesn't line up with the ring gear because of the housing that comes off the starter motor. So we've got a washer and a bolt down here. And we've got this one down here, which is actually doing fuck all. That's all it's holding the starter motor on. It actually is. It feels solid. I'm trying to pull it off, but that's dodgy. And that's how the original one was. So the guy that had done the original one had done the same thing. And that's the only possible way you can put the starter motor on here. Ideally, I'd have a hole going right through here and into the steel, like another one. So I'm probably going to do that, drill through the steel in here, bring something down on here. But, oh man, that is, that's dodgy. There's no way you can fix it. Or I'd have one that goes through the block around here and into the block and put a tap in there. But that's a tank, so you can't... Oh, no, there's that sheet metal there, too. It's thick as it's like four, four plate. We're going to drill through that. It's the same thickness there. Not great. Right, we'll connect her up. And uh, we'll see how we see how we get on with uh, making the actual motor go. So we've got one here and we've got the other one, I guess, goes onto there. It's on the solenoid. I've got power connected up here. There we go, we've got 12 volts, not really, ideally it wants to be 13 or 14 to crank it. Might be a bit low on the battery. So, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, the worst thing that could happen is that it can come out of the housing and float around in the ring gear in the engine and chill the teeth off. So I'm going to start it. I'll put the uh, 
put the phone down here so you can watch what the starter mode is doing and hopefully it doesn't fly to bits. It's not um, anywhere near secured like I would like. It feels like it can't come off, but there's just this bolt sitting on the edge and this one here going into virtually just on the edge of it. So fuck me. Hope I've got my terminals connected up. Here goes nothing to Gonna wander over and see what happens. Well, the battery's flat, but hey. My phone fell down. So the actual engine is getting turned over, but the batteries are flat. Not enough cranking, and I've got two. That should be enough. Two done in parallel. I have to take them out and bloody put them on charge, I think. I've actually got three. I've got a, a third one I've wired up to give a bit extra power. But they must have got flat being out here for a while. Well, we know the starter motor works. Now I've got to take the bloody batteries out. Fucking old boat, eh? Try that one more time. <laughs> It sounds quite tight, like it sounds quite, I don't know, it's cranking it, but it just sounds... I'll have a play with it for a while, but I don't think we're going to get started today. I've circuit tested the batteries, and they're not too bad. So what I'm doing now is, I'm giving it a good clean up where the earth is on this thing. This is the main part where it goes in the block, and that looks pretty good. I've Give it a scrape and put some contact cleaner on. And I'm also going to do the uh, actual contacts here that go on as well, plus everything else. This is a. Oh, that's not the one I wanted actually. I want to use this one here. I'm using the wrong one. That's what I want to use here as well. You can see already the colour coming out. I'll give you the old brush treatment. And I'll do all the bolts too. And hopefully we can get a, uh, a better contact. That might help the starter motor. What I'm going to do with the starter motor is I'm going to go into town. I'm going to get a long drill. I don't know what this uh, this car steel would like to drill through. What do you guys reckon? I know this alloy will go okay. There's a hole down in the alloy already. I could go through and match up with the block on the other side down in here. So I could put a bolt right through. This is dodgy. This is an accident. Won't happen. So I want to secure it. Or I could go straight through the flange here and the flange there. But the thing is I need to drill it's that long. I could take it out, but I'd rather drill it with it in place. That ensures I get it 100 percent right. Alright, I'm not expecting anything much here, but we'll see if we get any more crank out of it now she's earthed a bit better. Not great. On this job, I think we can conclude first of all I need to drill through this and secure it because it's not flush in the housing you can see it's slightly out that side there should be flush against the flange uh, we know that she's grounded all right so i guess the batteries over here need to be taken out and recharged they are on green i did charge them that moisture around them is just contact cleaner not water so next step to town buy some tools well i've been into town bought myself three cobit drill bits actually four a four mil a six mil eight mil and ten mil some bolts so I can fix up that starter motor because it's not very secure. I also bought myself a cordless skill saw, something I've always wanted because I've got to do work on my houseboat. That's where I'm currently going now. I'll be staying tonight. Pace is up in my truck. I'll go and give my walk later on and Daniel's looking after the rest of the dogs. Although I might stay down here and I just saw a fish rise just here. Home sweet home. That's it there. I've got a leak on the chimney. Water's coming up. I've been trying to fix it the last few days. This is my home. My own. I'm not staying at the old farmhouse. Pretty much living here all the time, really. And it's bloody awesome. I'm going to cook up some feed first meal of the day and do a bit of work up top. Right. I want to check is did the water come in here last night doesn't feel wet you can see there's been stuff coming down the chimney though yuck and yeah she's damp up there still I'm gonna have to bloody fix that leak there's water sitting in there oh no that's my starboard motor there and that's my port motor 
So I run the motors to charge the battery and also keep everything tickety-boo, go through the gears and the steering linkage, just keeps everything ship shape. It's a beautiful evening, but I've run out of gas for cooking on. That's my gas stove there. It's my kitchen. And I've got some pine cones I gathered yesterday. Got plenty of fuel, plus I also gathered these ones in here, which I'm drawing out. Got plenty of those, they're a wee bit uh, wet. So, this is my other form of cooking. I've got the pan on here now, and I'm using pine cones for fuel. It's starting to get some heat going. Takes a while to heat up, but that'll be just as good to cook on. I bought some chicken, because chicken is one thing that we just cannot grow. That was $4 for that, $4.50. How can you, how can you cheapen that? And it's free range. Uh, other foods I buy is mushrooms. I buy cream, because I don't have a cow yet. And I also buy this broccoli, because I just can't grow it quick enough. We've eaten all our broccoli, so right now I'm buying food. Which just goes against what I try to do, but trying to be 100% self-sustainable is impossible. I can't do it, it's just not possible. Gonna heat that up, smash some chicken in the pan and break my fast. You've probably seen me use it heaps of times on the channel. The old Cajun seasoning, it's really good on chicken. I'll put heaps on there and I'll also smash some salt on there too. This is a uh, suet. You can make it yourself. It's made out of beef dripping. It's a bit the equivalent to, say, leaf lard. I'm gonna put it in the pan. We're mixing it, we're mixing with a little bit of olive oil and it's probably the best fat you can use next to using either leaf lard from pork or duck fat. I've had this here in the boat for a year, just in the shelf. It's slightly rancid but it's not bad Consider it's had a year of being just sitting in the boat and if I keep the top on properly it'll last another year. This is what our ancestors used to do is store fat and use it as a preservative for storing stuff it works actually really well I we'll simply keep it in the cupboard see how fire's doing nice oh, you're starting to crank now that's good i'll throw another pine cone in there that's looking good that'll heat that plate up pretty quick now salt doesn't keep very well in the boat because it absorbs the moisture so i use this rock salt and grind it up why salt so good for drying out meat. You want to do crispy duck or you want to do crackling pork, salt's really good because you put it on your meat and it dries it out, making it crackle up. Heaps of salt on that. These guys are ready to go to the pan. Look at these little beauties. Mushrooms in the pan. This is all the power here. There's our saloon lights. So now we've got lighting. All done on batteries charged by solar power. They're on there. I'll show you where they are. Right up there on the roof. And what a beautiful evening it is. Look at that. Wow, just magic. I think these, these motors have had enough now. A cup of tea. Turn our port motor off first and lift it up. That's it and turn our starboard motor off and lift that one up. Just to make some noise, a bit of water. My dinner's just about ready. Cup of tea time. Oh, the same tea bags, Earl Grey, that my father used to have on the boat. Still his tea bags are here. Dad built this boat, I think, 17 years ago now. Well, converted it seven years. I'm not sure, actually. It hasn't been actually off the water in about that many years, so we need to get it up on stands, get the synchro lift, and we need to get underneath it. This cup of tea is good. People talk about having a home, and being happy having a home, and I've worked really, really hard to have the old farmhouse, but I've realised in working that the actual house itself 
It's not really the pleasure. The pleasure's been working towards something. It's a bit like when you're a kid, you build a tree hut. It's fun. But how much time do you actually spend in it? I think my food's ready. You don't. You might sleep in it one night, never again. And then the, eventually the bloody roof blows off or something happens. I've spent so much time down here on this houseboat and I love it. I mean, how could I not? Look at my window. That's my view. And I guess what I'm saying is that uh, the farmhouse really has not been built for me. It's been built for everybody else. My children, my friends, everybody. But I'm actually happy here. I could stay here for as, the rest of my days. I live alone. I'm happy living alone. And I've never been married and uh, I probably never will get married. I can't see a reason to because I enjoy my life. So this houseboat, thank you dad, my dad gifted this to me, he was supposed to end up on it himself, but he lost his balance, he got a, some problem, neurological problem and he couldn't stay upright, so he passed on to me and I've maintained it and I'm still maintaining it, and I'm living on it. So when the old farmhouse is finished, I'll probably still sleep down here, I don't know, occasionally I sleep up in my bedroom, but most of the time I'm on here because it's just so nice. And why would you not? Look at it, it's got a, it's got a full kitchen. It's got a perfectly good kitchen my father built. It's got a, a fridge. It's got a gas stove and an oven. And it's got a, a wood burner that keeps it nice and dry and warm inside. And the views are to die for, right around. And it's pretty awesome, isn't it? I, I'm very grateful, I love it here. The smell of this is coming up. It's like, seriously? Hoo 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 Taste test. Is there anybody out there that doesn't like chicken? Seriously? I oh, didn't even bring a knife and fork out. What do you do? Eat it with your bloody fingers, boy? Oh. I need to get a fork, excuse me for a minute. I suppose it's a little bit uh, rude eating in front of people, but. The way I see it is that you guys are joining me for dinner. So, uh, cheers. Absolutely beautiful night. Listen, hat off the table, son. Listen, what can you hear? If you really listen, I'll turn the volume up a little bit on the on the edit so you can hear what sounds here. An aircraft in the background. Seagulls, native birds in the surrounding, native trees. If there wasn't an aircraft, there'd be no man-made noises at all. That'd be kind of cool, but it's always an aircraft. These snap box are so easy to make, and I'm so pleased you guys enjoy them, because it's very little work on my part, other than remembering to put the phone and prop it up while I'm doing something. Thanks for joining me, and uh, good luck with your own adventures out there. Be good, can't be good, be careful, and we'll see you in the next one. Excuse my dirty fingers, I scrub as much as I could, but getting that starter motor off, that grease just so hard to get to.